Yeah, what's up with y'all, man? So um, I'm already looking at the NFL schedule and the, the betting lines for, for next week's divisional round games. And one stands out to me in particular, and it's this Bengals and Bills game. Now, I understand the Bills are at home, but to me, I think the Bengals plus four, even on the road, is the easiest money you're probably going to get throughout um throughout the bet throughout uh the NFL playoff games next week, man. And honestly, just watching the Dolphins game just, and just looking at Josh Allen after maybe like week 5, he's just been incons- the play has just been inconsistent coming into the year. We easily like I'm pretty sure most people consider him a, a top 3 MVP candidate and he just wasn't he just wasn't that guy throughout the year and honestly, the turnovers down the line, uh just missing throws and just lack of dominance, I could say. And even in that last week, uh, week eighteen game versus the Patriots, they were a little, they were saved a little, they were saved a little bit, and um, they were saved a little bit in the sense that um, uh, Naheem Hines had to have some miraculous plays on a special team, getting two touchdowns, and they barely, they barely eked out of there. I'm thinking what that, I think they still end up winning about double digits, but just wasn't uh, an impressive game. And once again, Josh Allen looked a little mediocre today, throwing two picks. He had a, uh, there was a fumble. And honestly, all of those turnovers, they were fortunate enough, didn't lead to freaking touchdowns, bro. There was like three turnovers that led to field goals. And they were all in Buffalo's territory. So, you know, you have any of those mistakes versus uh, Cincinnati, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a rough time for them. Especially considering that pass rush, uh, you know, in the playoffs, you definitely need a guy like Von Miller who has that experience and just seems to just turn up naturally in the playoffs. So, missing a guy like Von Miller, the pass, they, they still have a decent line. I'm not going to say, like, they don't have a decent pass rush, but it's just not, they don't have that juice. They don't have that, that oomph without, without Von Miller who tore his ACL. And honestly, their secondary isn't spectacular to me by any stretch of the imagination. Tredavious White. Still a good corner, but since he's come back from, I think he's towards ACL. Since he since he's come back from from the ACL injury, he's not looking like a he's not looking like a guy you just leave on the on the island and just say, "All right, this guy's done for the rest of the game." We don't even gotta really worry about him too much. But he's still a good player, so I'm not gonna knock that. I would love to see his metrics though, but I just know just from the eye test, just from watching him, I've seen you know he's not he's not as dominant as he once was. And like I, like I said, you see them struggling with a Miami team who's down to their third string seventh round pick or seventh round corn I mean quarterback, uh, and Skylar Thompson who just looked completely lost out there, had zero confidence, zero decisiveness, uh pocket awareness was on zero, and they still barely eked out a win versus um versus the Dolphins. So Let's let's take a look at uh, Skylar Thompson's stat line right now. Eighteen for forty-five. Brad even complete fifty percent of his passes. Not even yo. That's like I I think that's almost like thirty some percent because uh, the thirty-six would be fifty percent. So if he's eighteen for forty-five, Brad was almost damn near at twenty-five percent of his passes. One touchdown, two intos, and he was sacked four times. So. Um, I'll let you know, these guys, and they were still fortunate enough to barely win. It took, you know, a favorable call, favorable call on uh, third down where they get with, uh, where they received the first down. I mean, they're still likely going to win. There's only like 30 seconds left. If Skylar Thompson couldn't score a TDU possession before, then I highly doubt he's going to get them in field goal range in 30 seconds. I mean, like 20 seconds or whatever it, may, it might have been uh, by the time they got the ball. So like I said, man, this uh this build team just hasn't been looking impressive. They ain't haven't been dominant whatsoever. So uh, I know once they go up against a team like Cincinnati with the receiving threats they got, it's gonna it's gonna be hell. Now a lot of people gonna look at it. Oh well, Cincinnati barely beat Baltimore, but Baltimore's defense is stout. Um, the, the, they got they have the corners, they have the corners, they have the secondary, and uh, you know they have veteran guys on the line as well. Um. You know, good, the solid, good, solid pass rushers. Uh, you got vets like Justin Houston and whatnot. So, and then of course you add a guy like Roquan Smith to the mix. You got Marcus Peters, um, guys who you know 
been all pro corners. Marcus Peters, Martin Humphrey, Pro Bowl corners. Um, of course, they was gonna give these guys a tough game, and what they did was they played they played smash mouth football, bro. They ran the ball, milked a lot of time clock, um, a lot of time off the clock. I don't think Buffalo Buffalo's run game isn't. Isn't isn't that they don't play that style of football? I should say right, and they their run game is just isn't great, honestly. Um, if if uh Josh Allen isn't keeping it, they aren't scary running the ball. So, um, they're gonna have some problems with Buff uh with uh, Cincinnati, and right now that plus four is looking good. Like I usually never bet until like at least the night before or the day before the game, but this is a line where I might have to take. I might have to take this early, a week before, before the line end up coming down to like two and a half or something. But uh, yeah, like I said, man, this Bengals plus plus four, log it in, and uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm out. Peace.